someone who was there at Ground Zero for 9-11, somebody who was there uh, at multiple speaking events uh, and uh, is joining us via cell phone from the park uh, there in New York City, Webster Griffin Tarpley, doctor of history. He's also an economist. He's been to Libya just in the last few months and uh, predicted what well, was already going on in the East, the massacre of blacks. Uh, that's now been confirmed. A uh, former congressman who was thought dead but was in hiding in Libya because of the al-Qaeda forces trying to kill him, says he saw NATO troops beheading Libyans and killing blacks systematically. Even Reuters has confirmed that's happening. 30,000 slaughtered so far, a humanitarian war crime. We'll talk about that with Tarpley as well. Webster Griffin Tarpley, thank you for joining us. First off, tell us what you witnessed this year, 10 years after the false flag event. Well, Alex, I, I have to make it clear. I uh, didn't really go to. You couldn't get near these these uh, commemorations. You had to be a, a family member or something. Uh, and so I essentially what I attended was uh, the one big event in the city, which was a, a rally and lectures against the official story. In other words, the New York that can say no. I was glad to be there. This was at Independent Network News. It's an operation on radio and sometimes on television. It's run by Lenny Charles and Tom Kiley. And this is here on Walker Street. So it's basically Walker Street near 6th Avenue. It's Tribeca, more or less. It's actually quite close to ground zero. But we had 300 New Yorkers saying no to the official baloney and um, not just unanswered questions, but um, essentially my hop made it happen on purpose. The Rogue Network did it. It's a privately controlled rogue network of treasonous putschists, coup artists, in the U.S. government. And they did it. And they did it through the 46 drills. And uh, this was the debut of my fifth edition of 9-11 uh, Synthetic Terror Made in USA. And uh, I urge people to get it because I've, I'm, I've gone from 25 drills a couple of years ago to 46 drills. 46 drills. In the two years before, on the day of, and a couple of their basically in advanced preparation. So that's how it was done. Now, we Webster. Had Madsen, we had Wayne Madsen. We had, uh, um, let's see, we had uh, Ray McGovern. We had uh, Gary Knoll, a bunch of other speakers. Uh, very good atmosphere. The 9 11 movement, of course, is not what it was. Obama has sucked the atmosphere, the oxygen out of the room. And, of course, a lot of the websites have been taken over by people who really act more like provocateurs than, uh, than truth seekers. But yeah. still, there's still a hardcore of, of good, strong support. A lot of them are your fans, Alex. A lot of them uh, ask about you, and uh, you know they say they've, they've heard me on your program. So yeah, you're, but, you're but, but uh, Webster, well. Webster, I, I rarely disagree with you on points of fact. I mean, I may disagree on political or socio socioeconomic solutions or policy, but I've got to disagree with you. What's happened with 9-11 Truth is it doesn't have the liberal uh, core to it that was involved in it because they were just anti-Bush and anti-war. That group is, has been foundation, has been foundation co-opted and, and is broken up. The general understanding that 9-11 is an inside job the general awakening to false flag terror as a tool of statecraft throughout history, uh, the acceptance of, of the fact that government stage events in culture and society across the board has never been uh, more powerful. Yes, as, a, as an opinion, I, I think you're probably right. But in what counts in this world, which is organized political power, the ability to turn out thousands of people and get them to do something reasonable. I'm afraid for the moment this is not where it was in 2006. Let's take your conference in, in Los Angeles in 2006. That was a great watershed. When, when that conference that you organized with the 1,200 people in, in Los Angeles, when that got on C-SPAN, that broke the control of the reactionary Republicans over the House and the Senate, and it essentially headed off the Iran war and the Syria war that the rogue network would have bootlegged in through, through Cheney in particular. Cheney has got a new biography, autobiography out, like in my time, where he confesses that he was pushing for war with Syria in June of 2007. He tried to get Bush to approve it. He couldn't get support in the cabinet. He's very bitter that Condi Rice wouldn't go with him at that point. But, of course, then, after Cheney had failed to convince Bush 
the rogue network went to work above and behind both of them. And then we had that rogue B-52 of August, September 2007. That was the, the uh, extra-legal attempt by the rogue network. They basically hijacked the B-52 and took it from North, North Dakota to Louisiana that was on its way to the Middle East. And this is all uh, documented now, and it's coming out more and more. That's the, the, the great thing about 9-11 Truth was to have headed off those things. Now, uh, obviously, there's a lot to be done, but right now we're on the verge of a European banking panic. Oh, my God, a, a jackhammer has opened up here behind me. Uh, this is New York. I don't know if that's... If that's no, no, it's sound. okay. It's okay. okay. Uh, I want to get into what's happening in Europe because they're announcing... On Bloomberg and everywhere else, the bankers are going to save you. And they openly said on Bloomberg this morning, it's a new talking point, it's the public's fault and it's the government's fault. <laughs> and the bankers that created the derivatives and got our government traders to sign on to their debt, they're going to fix it with VAT and carbon taxes paid to them with this new United States of Europe. Uh, which which isn't a United States with liberty and freedom. It's a banking dictatorship, a finance oligarch tyranny, a, a corporate right. receivership system, as you know, and that you predicted in Obama deception and fall of the republic. Uh, so, so, so what do you say to this new talking point? This is Europe of the banks and cartels. Here's the point. You, you've got now about a dozen banks in Europe that are candidates to be the next Lehman Brothers, and we could just go down the list, but it's essentially... The top two or three money center banks in each country. Uh, these, these are zombie banks. They they don't have any any social function. They don't provide capital for productive investment. They just suck in public resources. I, I have not been able to keep up with the uh, with the banking panic here over the weekend because of the density of 9/11 stuff. But what I heard this morning is the bankers are going to try to get China to backstop their derivatives bubble. If the Chinese do that, that will be national suicide for China, and that will essentially seal their doom, and I would urge China not to do that. Don't get sucked in to propping up uh, the debt of these uh, bankrupt finance, uh, finance oligarchs and derivatives mongers. Now, uh, Webster, going back to false flag terror for a moment, then I want to get back into the economy, and then by I want to the get... US. By the U.S. and the British. Well, by, by the corporate oligarchy, getting back yeah. to, uh, to false flag terror, I'm seeing major acclamation, major ground preparation, psychologically, uh, major rollout preparatory phase for big false flags. They are really hyping it and, and having army checkpoints with regular police all over the country as a way to condition the public. And then, of course, they can stage terror, blame it on anti-Federal Reserve groups. Uh, what is your view on the incredible drum beating that I'm seeing? Well, I have I posted on uh, on Friday night. I think I put up on my website topley.net a uh, an alert right, that I basically I would say it's time for something like an orange alert. Uh, this is because uh, the European banking panic, the U.S. banking panic. It would be very convenient, for example, to declare martial law and under the cover of martial law, uh, essentially uh, use executive orders to order. Another bailout. It would be very hard to get a bailout through Congress for the zombie banks. But if the zombie banks blow, they're going to want a second bailout. And I think the only way to do that is under the cover of martial law. There will be demonstrations now. People will be out there fighting against genocidal austerity imposed by reactionary politicians and, and Wall Street. Well, that's Obama another Obama. question. They've now announced what we were told three years ago was going to happen. They're getting ready to take at least half the pension funds on top of dollar devaluation that also steals the value of the 20 year and more vets who were under law guaranteed their pension. They're talking openly saying how great it is to take half their pension fund. And Webster, they may not, may not have to stage anything when they do that. There's a bunch of old vets that are going to get very, very angry. Yes, so the, the other thing, of course, is the international picture. Um, Right now, uh, the Anglo-Americans are very upset because their destabilization of Syria is not working, has not worked. The Syrian army, I guess by and large, has crushed the death squads and terrorist commandos of the Muslim Brotherhood and whatever else uh, NATO and the CIA were able to funnel into Syria. And it looks to me like the situation in Syria will now quiet down gradually, although the constant attempts by Anglo-American media to create the fiction the illusion of some kind of a, 
Uh, but what's the end game? Is. Why put Muslim Brotherhood Al Qaeda in Egypt and then allow them to torch the Israeli embassy? We know the West is orchestrating that. Why? Why? Why let Al Qaeda attack Syria? Why? Why give Libya to Al Qaeda? And admittedly, now missile systems. What comes after that? Why? Why is Al Qaeda so loving? It's the it's the, the policy is to destroy the modern state. These are neo feudalist uh, Anglo American financiers. They want to smash the modern nation state because that's where resistance from them can emerge and has emerged. They would like to smash Libya. They're in the process of that. They wanted to smash Syria. The same thing would go for Egypt. They would they're basically. They, they would like to jettison most of Egypt and simply seize the Aswan High Dam and the Lake Nasser complex and the Suez Canal, and the rest of it can go to hell from the Anglo-American point of view. Uh, Israel is also under big, big, uh, big pressure. Here on the other side of town, we have the United Nations General Assembly is basically coming together now in the course of this next week. There will be an attempt by the uh, Palestinians to assert their statehood. In other words, the idea that they, they deserve a nation state, uh, which I, I think is absolutely correct. They will get broad support from the world community. They may well get the two-thirds in the General Assembly that they need. If it gets to the Security Council, the United States will be forced to cast a very embarrassing, tormented, isolated veto. It will be basically the U.S. against most of the world on the Palestinian state. The U.S. would like to avoid this just about at any cost. So uh, a lot of a lot of shenanigans will be will be uh, staged in order to obfuscate, uh, you know, what's going exactly. on. Exactly. Right? If there's a terror attack hurting children, then uh, see, we we you know can't have any statehood for anybody. Uh, now continuing uh, here, shifting gears. In, uh, wait, Alex. In the same breath, notice that the, we have the twelve tyrants now. The twelve tyrants are meeting in Washington, right? The super committee or super congress. This is an illegal Bonapartist uh, committee. It's a step towards dictatorship, but. If the 12 tyrants and the actual Congress and Obama can't agree on a program of genocidal austerity, then there's going to be a guillotine coming down on the Pentagon to the tune of about $60 billion per year. Now, some would say that fact alone would motivate uh, the special forces underground, let's say, to go out and pull a false flag stunt just to make sure that they don't lose their budget. Oh, well, over the weekend, you must have mi missed it in an uh, audio interview with Human Events. Rumsfeld, we should play it later, uh, it's up on Infowars.com, Rumsfeld said, he came out and openly said, if, if you cut, in fact, put it on screen, guys, Human Events, Rumsfeld, if you cut defense budget, there will be another attack. That's like Cheney on Meet the Press. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, seven years ago saying, if there's a 9-11 investigation, there will be a nuclear attack. They are communicating to governments and agencies, yes, we're terrorists, we'll stage it. That's why they make these statements that are open, but, but where they can have double meaning. I, I meant we won't have the funds to protect you, there'll be a nuclear attack. But the way they state it, you cut our funding, buddy, we're going to attack you. Uh, very sickening. The other thing going on here in New York, a lot of stuff happening in the Big Apple. Out here in Forest Hills, out in Queens and then on into, into Brooklyn, we have the Anthony Weiner uh, Congress seat, uh, House of Representatives. And that's an open seat now, so they're having a by-election. And uh, it looks like the Republican, he's, he's just a you know, conservative party reactionary hack. But that would be a protest against Obama. And I say if the Republican wins that seat out there in Queens, the Democratic Party has to dump Obama. There's got to be a candidate to challenge Obama in the primary. And there's more talk of Obama being being thrown uh, under the bus politically by the Democrats. Stay there, Webster, though. I want to get to Libya because that because the Pentagon just announced, yes, they've got troops there. They're claiming they just arrived. We've known they've been there for six months. It's all part of lying to the American people. Right, we'll go back to Webster. Webster, quickly here. Uh, we have called it all with precision. NATO, U.S. troops were there six months ago, called advisors. Now they admit larger U.S. ground forces are going onto the ground. Uh, as we said uh, in September, October, uh, here it is. Turns out Gaddafi, they've now gotten his intelligence briefs. He, he uh, knew it was coming from intermediaries in Congress he was talking to. And here's Fox News. U.S. boots on the ground in Libya, Pentagon confirms. And former congressman says he saw NATO troops behead Libyans. Uh, Walter uh, Fontroy. What do, you, what do you think of that, Webster? You've yeah. been there. Well, Walter Fontroy. Let me just say who that is. 
Pardon Kai. Uh, the District of Columbia, as people know, does not have a voting member in the House, which, of course, they should. They should have two. They got more people than Wyoming, so they should have two, two voting congressmen. But for a long time, they've had delegates. And Walter Fogroy is a veteran. He goes back to Martin Luther King. This is a, a, a fighter for civil rights who has a very impressive record. And he was replaced some years back by Eleanor Holmes Norton here in the district. But uh, he's kept up with the causes. And he was over there, and he was with uh, Maxi Darius Mezem Roaya and Thierry Maison in that uh, at Carinthia Hotel, and uh, later on moved around. And, and some of the other guys made it out through Malta on a harrowing 36-hour trip on the Mediterranean. But I guess Fondroy, I'm not up on the details right now with Fondroy, but I'm glad he's safe because this is a... Uh, a person of great merit and, uh, you know, kind of an elder statesman of civil rights. No, because, uh, because he was black. black. Yeah, he's black. No, I was about to say, because he was black, he had to hide for a month because Al-Qaeda, under NATO command, was trying to kill him. And he watched out windows, he's now reporting, as they murdered blacks in mass. He had to hide because Al-Qaeda was going to kill him. Absolutely. That's the, the benghazi tobruk Donna axis of terror. And we know that the guy... This awful guy, uh, uh, Hassidi Hassadi Belhaj, that's all the same guy. He operates under numerous aliases, right? But he's Stay uh, there, Webster. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. I'm going to do five more minutes with you, then calls and news. i got to apologize to stations that Webster does not like Al-Qaeda in charge of Libya and give them tens of billions of dollars and heat-seeking missiles. You believe that's patriotic as the government says to do it. Still, you've been lied to. I mean, the, the West started the war, started the attempted overthrow. It was an unpopular uprising. We're now six plus months uh, into the Al Qaeda uprising, five months uh, with the peace bombing uh, effort launched by Lord Obama um, and, of course, uh, the Italians and the French and the British. But now, here they are like we're idiots. U.S. boots on the ground in Libya, Pentagon confirms Fox News. Despite repeated assurances from President Obama military leaders that the U.S. would not send uniformed military personnel to Libya, where U.S. service members arrived, four U.S. service members arrived on the ground in Tripoli over the weekend. Four? I mean, uh, three months ago, I had guests on who I confirmed who they were who said that there were dead U.S. troops coming in from Libya. And then, and then, the, and then foreign media videotaped Europeans and Americans firing weapons. Uh, Webster, you were there during all of this. I mean, they talk to us like we're children, Webster. I believe uh, the report was that a boat carrying uh, U.S. and other NATO special forces arrived in Benghazi around the 15th or 16th or 17th of February, somewhere in there. You remember the Dutch special forces were captured. British special forces and MI6 were captured by, uh, in some cases, by the Benghazi rebels themselves. So we got the situation where the military commander of the city of Tripoli is Belhaj Hasidi Hassadi, a hard. Webster, your phone cut out. Are you there? Webster, we're going to break. We'll come back to you since your phone cut out. And I want you to finish uh, up on this uh, former uh, congressional delegate, uh, congressman from um, District of Criminals, saying he saw all this. You know, Watson says he claimed it. Everything you said that was going on in Libya has now been proven. What he's saying has happened in other cases. I mean, you can question him, but I, I, I think it's prima facie uh, right there on the face of it. We'll be right back. The websites are prisonplanet.tv and infowars.com. Your calls and a mass of news. Going to Tarpley. Uh, Tarpley, uh, this is really unspeakably wild because it's backed up by what you witnessed. It's backed up by Reuters, even Washington Post, uh, even Al Jazeera that's pro-war uh, has had to admit, yeah, there's piles of dead black people everywhere, women, children, men. Uh, they, they take them out and kill them, even though, of course, there's black Libyans. Uh, and you reported on that going on in the East months and months ago, it was confirmed, hanging black men from lamp poles. But we now have a well-known, respected Former U.S. congressman or delegate from the District of Columbia, but technically a congressman, Walter uh, Fontroy, said that he had to hide out for a month, uh, that he was presumed dead for those that didn't know, and that he was having to hide out and took him a month to get out because blacks were being killed on the spot. And we know even Anglo reporters were being sniped and, and, and shot 
uh, by Al Qaeda and NATO forces. Uh, this is a this is a new level of war crime. But I guess because Obama is heading it up, there won't be any war crime charges because he's the man of peace. As as I, uh, because he was given that peace prize. I think it's it's a tremendous embarrassment now for Obama in the black community to have a, a an eyeball witness of the moral authority and historical status stature of Delegate Fauntroy. That's going to be something Obama will have to deal with. It's, uh, it's going to hurt him a lot. Uh, the other thing is, these are the new vandals, right? The new, the new Al-Qaeda rulers of Libya are like the vandals. Those were the ones, you know, they came out of Asia. They went all the way around through Spain and into North Africa. They took over Libya, and then they started taking over Sicily and Sardinia and Corsica, and that's who sacked Rome in 476, right? That's the end of the empire. So what you're going to have is Al-Qaeda pirates in the Mediterranean. And just a couple of examples. There's this guy Salabi, right? We just went through Belhaj. Belhaj is bad enough. Salabi came out a couple of days ago. He's another one of these terrorist commanders who's now, you know, the boss of Libya. And he says that the former Gaddafi ministers in the, in the Benghazi rebel council are no longer acceptable to the killers. In other words, the gunmen want to get rid of these former Gaddafi guys. And that means Jalil is the head of state and Jibril is the head of government, the guy who pals around with Hillary Clinton. And uh, it sounds to me like they're getting ready to, um, to eliminate those two. This guy, Salabi and Belhaj, those guys are prime suspects, along with Hifter, in the killing of Yunus, right? The military commander of the rebels was assassinated a little bit more than, uh, than a month ago now. And there were unconfirmed reports over the weekend that Jalil had been assassinated, that the head of state of the rebels had simply been gunned down. Yeah, so the rebels are busy killing each other, and, and, right. and, and, and al-Qaeda uh, is, is starting to knock people out so they can fully take over. And undoubtedly, uh, the West is going to be very proud of that and think that the public has no memory. And in a couple of years, we'll be having to give up our liberties and invade Libya again to battle al-Qaeda and they'll probably even claim that al-Qaeda is working for, for Qaddafi or something. Uh, oh, here's, a, here's another scenario. You get the al-Qaeda regime in Libya to invade Algeria, and then the U.S. invades Algeria to protect them from al-Qaeda, or some variation on that. Because remember, Algeria is now a target. That's another big country, big oil producer, very valuable place. Uh, Algeria has not supported the al-Qaeda rebellion in in Libya at all, and the U.S. is furious. They always wanted to overthrow Algeria. Algeria has 50,000 Chinese workers, and the U.S. and the British want them kicked out. So Algeria, big target in the coming coming weeks. Very interesting, Webster. Uh, but again, uh, is there any way to start some type of war crimes movement um, for the racial genocide going on uh, but, I, I mean, uh, that's naive. Uh, the U.N. ran the Ivory Coast invasion that killed tens of thousands. And admittedly, their rebel forces were slaughtering people in mass. This is truly a criminal group drenched in blood at every level. I, I think that the, uh, the, you know, stopping the support of al-Qaeda and stopping this imperialist interference should become an important program point in an emerging mass strike movement. And again, if we have the, the collapse of the European banking system over the next two months, which I think is more than likely, that will soon be followed by a banking panic in the United States, and then we will need to implement a recovery program and a mass strike, right? What, what began in Wisconsin in February, I think will come back on a much larger scale after having gone underground for you know six months or whatever it's been, uh, and at that point uh, this will be some uh, demand that can be raised. Uh, I don't you know, and and nine eleven, nine eleven also gets fed into that. In other words, we want to stop stop the drills, stop the totalitarianism, stop false flag attacks, uh, and uh, and that's that's part of the uh, the general movement to break the power of the Wall Street finance oligarchy because that's the enemy, that's the goal. Wall Street, Wall Street, Wall Street, fight. Webster Tarpley, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your thank analysis. You. Bye-bye, uh, Alex. Congratulations on your program. Oh, the television show? Thank you, Webster. Yeah, right.